Ahoy! So, get this. It is perfect timing because right behind me, the Duluth Aerial Lift Bridge is going up. So let's check this out. We can see a sailboat. Oh, I hope you can see it. There's a sailboat going under right now, so they have to lift the bridge enough so that way it can fit. Oh, this is one of the coolest parts of Duluth. In the distance, you can see a large freighter as well. Sure would be cool to be on that ship right now. Duluth history. It is boggling how rich in shipping history we have here. So perfect that the lift bridge is right here outside of Great Lakes Aquarium. We can see it all the time, but also gives us a chance to talk about it all the time because we see those ships come through all shipping season. So today we are going to talk about a little bit of what used to be here, how things used to transport, um, leading to today having something like the lift bridge that allows for these vessels to go I'll in and out. A copy. In fact, the Twin Ports, so where we are located right here, is one of the largest farthest most inland ports in the entire world. Right here in Duluth, Minnesota in Superior, Wisconsin. That's amazing. And what has happened to get to this point is just an even better story as well. But first, speaking of ships, it would be so hard not to tell a good joke. And it has to do with pirates and pirates are on ships. So I think it fits in with this. Maybe? Would you, would you say, Abby? Sure. Okay, so here's the joke. What? is a pirate's favorite letter. That's not it, that's not a letter. What about that? Is that that's a letter? also not a letter. Maybe Morse code. Okay. I don't know Morse code. I'm, I'm gonna get one long one. Yep. Another one. I don't know Morse code. I don't know Morse code either. But I don't think that's the answer. So, Abby, what is a pirate's favorite letter? Hmm. No? I'm gonna no? guess R? You know, like R. Close one. No, it's the C. Oh man, I knew Which it. <laughs> it's super cool because some of the ships that we see coming into the ports come from the sea. That's right. Boats from the Atlantic Ocean make their way all the way through the locks and dams here to Duluth, Minnesota. That's like a over 2,500 mile journey just to get here. So we're shipping goods all over, not only in the Great Lakes, but worldwide, going out into that Atlantic Ocean. But, like I said, we have to go back a little bit to understand how we got to where we are today. And that actually begins with the indigenous, I practice this word too, <laughs> indigenous communities uh, here in this region, so the Ojibwe communities, were essential in understanding trade routes, food, just this entire area. This was their home, this still is their home, and it's amazing the contributions they have had to this area. So those are kind of where our beginnings are of trade routes and moving through waterways. And that's built into then when another group of folks came over from Europe. Now those people, I got a little artifact here, Ooh. were the voyagers. So the voyagers came in and they kind of expanded on some of those trade routes, but they were super, super grateful and they were very dependent on those indigenous communities, those Ojibwe communities for their survival and their success. And the fur trade went on for about 200 years. So that's a long time experiencing and looking around and trying to figure out where these waterways are going. So here on the Duluth side, we have access to the St. Louis River which is to my right, so going south or east out of Duluth, and opens up into Lake Superior. So these water routes also then connected going north and west into where today's boundary waters are, into Canada, and eventually going even further west, connecting from the east coast to the west coast. So many journeys have started here in this area, trying to find those routes going all the way across the country. But things change and more happens and we started seeing industries like logging and mining. 
And so to move those valuable goods, they also had to think about how do we move these massive amounts, these huge quantities of industrial goods to other places. So then became commercial shipping. Now commercial shipping on the scale that we think of today didn't really start until 1855. So that's pretty good ways back. And that's when the Sault Ste. Marie locks first opened. So that was allowing for large ships to come into Lake Superior. So they had to be lifted up out of the water and over bits of land because of differences in how the land is. So I have this map here. So you can see we are over here in Lake Superior. So it's essential to have a series of locks and dams going through all the different lakes, all of the Great Lakes, to go to the St. Lawrence River, which then brings you out to the Atlantic Ocean. So we call this the St. Lawrence River Seaway. So that Sault Ste. Marie at the St. Mary's River, those locks and dams were essential back in 1855 for shipping commercially to happen here in Duluth. We didn't actually see the first ship coming into our area until a couple years after that. So the first, oh, I'm losing my papers here, sorry. The first commercial ship, stay, was actually the steamer Norman. And that came in in 1896. So quite a few years after that lock opened up, but then became the boom of shipping in this area. So today we see about 900 vessels coming in and out of the Twin Ports area. And I say Twin Ports area because there's actually two entry points into this harbor. Now this harbor stretches about 41 miles, which is pretty big, that's a massive harbor. And so there is the Duluth entry, so the aerial lift bridge, the Duluth canal, this is man-made. And then over on the Superior side is the Superior entry. And that's actually a natural channel that ships can go on into. So we have two different ways that ships are coming on in. Now that hit bit of history is super interesting, especially because there's some really fun folklore going into what has happened to get the Duluth Canal. So the folklore is that a long, a long, way back when, when we were trying to figure out how the shipping was gonna impact our economy, and we wanted to bring ships into Duluth, because at that time, it was way easier to go in the superior entry. So that meant they were going through and seeing all of the Wisconsin uh, kind of regulations and such. But Duluth wanted the ships to come in on the Duluth side, the Minnesota side. So that way that industry would start sparking up and being a big part of our economy here. So legend has it that when there was some discussion about closing down the opportunities to have a canal on the Minnesota side, a bunch of Duluth citizens actually banded together, came over to Park Point, Minnesota Point here, and dug the canal by hand. Now, I don't know for sure how much truth is in that, but the canal did get done in record time in order for it to be brought into the legislative actions and such, so that way we can have it here on the Duluth side, which meant more ships could come in on the Minnesota side. So, fun stories, all of that, that really cool history right in our backyard. And when we have all those ships, we can see a lot coming in as well. So this is a huge part of our economy. That history is super rich and starting back with, you know, logging and timber, just even moving to different parts of Lake Superior and now going beyond into steel and iron ore. So there was so much iron ore being mined from up in kind of north central Minnesota, the Iron Range, if you might have heard it called. There was so much iron coming out of there that they say that Minnesota steel, Minnesota iron ore, built the country in the 20th century. Because it was going to Chicago, it was going to these major cities that were booming and going up in tall buildings and they needed that steel. And a lot of it came from here in Minnesota. So without all of that, who knows what type of city Chicago might have been or over in Ohio, all of those places. So that's really neat. But today, some of that has changed. We don't see as much logging or lumber industry moving in the ships. Instead, we still see iron ore. These are some taconite pellets that would get loaded up on a freight. We also see things like, make sure my papers don't go away, coal coming in and out. And then 
all sorts of drains. So those are three big things that are getting shipped around. But then there's also things like gypsum and limestone that are mined here in Minnesota and sent out or concentrate bentonite, which is great in clays. So this is a clay-like substance. My favorite thing that Minnesota is one of the biggest exporters of, sugar beet pellets. So I'll show you what those look like. Huh, maybe not something that you would think of coming out of Minnesota, but it is pretty big. And they go out on two different types of ships. So we have our Lakers and our Salt. Kind of see over 